What's up guys, welcome to the soccer house. This is not a fun one, is it? Um, just woke up. I wasn't able to watch the Panama USA game live, so I had to wait till like the Paramount Plus replay. Had all my friends who I texted like soccer about. I was like, no spoilers, no spoilers. Thinking I was staying up to see another win. Um, there was no reason for us not to. But instead, I mean, that was the single worst 90 minutes of soccer that I've ever seen our team play. Um, as far as I can remember, um, regardless of who was called into a camp, it, it was horrendous. And the blame is strictly on Greg Burhalter. Um, I mean, where do we start? Um, I'm in the mountains right now. Um, so I just kind of found a quiet spot, <laughs> some, some tranquility to pour all this uh, frustration onto the internet. That's healthy, right? But there's a waterfall over there, so I should hopefully feel better after this. But um, yeah, I mean, the roster dropped. I was kind of out and about, and there are ways to rotate, and there are ways to disrespect the opponent. And Greg Berhalter disrespected the opponent. He said, after the Jamaica game, if we think we've qualified for the World Cup, uh, we're gonna get our ass kicked in Panama. And you know, there's not really many performances from players tonight, I mean, last night, that, you know, warrant much uh, protection. They were bad, don't get me wrong. But when a whole 11 is bad, when a team has played five World Cup qualifying games and hasn't looked good outside of about 90 minutes collectively, let's say second half of Honduras, after really the same things we saw today, tonight we saw in Honduras it was just they came back and everyone forgot Jamaica slow first half again second half we break through but that was against the worst team in the region right now man I, if alarm bells aren't ringing for you then I don't then I question what are you are you watching these games because we have not looked good we haven't looked good all year. I mean, where do you even start? I mean, I guess you dive into the midfield. Leggett was awful, awful. A performance so bad that, uh, number one, it's it's a calamity that he stayed on for 90 minutes. He offered nothing. He inspired nothing. He, I can't even think of one bright moment in his game. And yet he's on 90 minutes and you take off Yunus Musa who I think out of that terrible midfield was the odd man out because we have seen how he can fit into what Greg wants to do. He's strong on the ball, he's creative, he's someone who will progress the ball and dribble with it forward, provide the verticality that was apparently just thrown out the window. I, did you see any verticality last night? Please let me know in the comments. And maybe like and subscribe if you want me to feel a little bit better and we can all recover together. Um, Acosta was atrocious. Again, 90 minutes. And then he looked like he had a concussion at the end. And I'm like, don't they have concussion substitutions? Take this guy off. Bring in Hoppy for the last couple minutes. Like, he's crazy. The guy is literally, was the, one of the standout players on that Gold Cup team when Zardes looked pretty bad, when Ariola was horrendous. Ariola started both games, 90 minutes in the first, too bloody long in the second game. Man, I think where things get inexcusable is the removal of Eunice Musa at halftime. Like, I'm not gonna come out here and say Eunice was amazing in that first half. But there were moments, there were moments where I was like, that was the same sort of movement, the same type of patterns we've seen from him in that Jamaica game. If someone in this midfield is gonna help give some service to that front three that was starved, it'd be him. And we go to a double six pivot situation. And I mean, what do you think is gonna happen? Like, and that's the thing, it's like, people can write off people's opinions being, oh, you're anti-MLS, you're anti this, you're Euro snob. But it just, it's so obvious. It's so obvious when you saw that roster, when you see George Bello, I mean, but this is still on Greg because he could have called up jo jo Joe Scally. He could have picked up another fullback. But George Bello was terrible against Honduras. He was particularly, not, nothing particularly amazing in the Gold Cup. Um, I'm not saying he can't develop and become a good left back for us, but man, throw him back in the deep end in another away game, and he was awful. Shaq Moore, 
was fine, passable. But then when <laughs> you're chasing a goal and out of all the players you could pick off and just be like, okay, we need more attacking threat. You put on DeAndre Yedlin in the second half, Christian Roldan, come on, come on. It's a, it's a joke. Those subs were horrendous. I mean, let me get to the front three. I mean, at least we have a clinical striker up top with an own goal for GSC Zardes. The most Zardes moment you could imagine. And I do not like getting on him because this one isn't sarcastic. The last one was sarcastic. He does seem like a good dude. And he's a good MLS striker. But he literally did not have a touch in the attacking third the whole game. We did not have a shot on goal. Oh my gosh. I, the more I remember all this, it's like I tried to sleep this off, and you just can't. I mean, I don't want to think about it, but the attack, the attacking three, Tim Weah, Giassi Zardes, Paul Ariola. Um, Ariola was exactly what you expected, except you didn't get any of the few qualities that, like, I, on Twitter, you can look it up, you can look at the tape. I was very commendable of his pressing, his energy. Where was that tonight? Even, like, the one thing I think he does well was not there. So that's a 1 out of 10 for me. Get out of this team. You're, like, the 8th best winger. If that, I'd say Jordan Morris, if it wasn't for these crazy injuries, would be way above you. You should never step foot on this team ever again. Um, Tim Weah, you know, I, I loved him, um, but that was not a good performance. He did not find the game. And he, more importantly, he was not found either. Um, no one was, I mean, Matt Turner. Let me finish on the forwards, but uh, Zardes was completely non-existent. I don't know why you sub out Pepe in the first game with the assumption you're going to start him in the second. And if things go wrong, you could change it up in the second half. Like, I would have absolutely paid Pepe. He's the man in form. But no, you bench him. And nothing to write home about his sub appearance. But I don't really blame him. I mean, there was nothing happening in that midfield. No creativity. Um, Matt Turner, you know... I had said before this game, before the Jamaica game, that the spot was his until proven otherwise. And there were some good saves. There were some good saves last night. But that distribution was so bad. And I have people responding to um, <laughs> my comments from last night. I was just ranting on different people's YouTube channels. You know how it is. The passes Matt Turner was trying and the long balls he was putting through like, I'm like, I'm totally for it. The, the way this game was shaving out, like, sometimes just boot it down long, see if you're striking, bring it down, maybe you can catch the second ball. I mean, he was kicking them straight over the last line of defense, out of bounds behind <laughs> for a goal kick. That was horrendous. And then there was one pass, which we've seen multiple times now, him trying to get cute with a pass and like kind of like dinks it into midfield and immediate counterattack for the opponent. That wasn't good. I, I would like to see Zach Stefan, I think, in the next game. Just to try something different because um, I don't want to reward um, that sort of stuff, if you know what I mean. And Zach Stefan is still a quality keeper, no matter how good of the form is of Matt Turner. Guys, man, I'm, I think we're all in the dumps right now, so maybe we can all uh, try and have some group therapy online here. Um, Costa Rica is so important. I drive to uh, Columbus Wednesday morning and I'll be doing a video at the match my wife will be there hopefully we'll have a good time hopefully we can bounce back but the problem is is like I mean if we win three points all of a sudden everyone forgets and we can't keep on forgetting because the more these games happen the more it's proven that this manager just isn't up is enough for it and I would rather suffer short-term consequences to find a good manager who gets it and can put this team together in a way that's going to, number one, make the most out of our best players, which Greg has literally never brought the best out of Pulisic. Um, and there's definitely some blame that could be on Pulisic in that situation, but at the same time, it is the manager's job to put the best 11 out there. And when your best player has never had a good game under you, but he's been good elsewhere, I mean, come on. Uh, but yeah, so I'm hoping for a win, but at the same time, like I almost dread it. So anyway, let me know if you can cheer me up in the comments. Bye guys.